Hi, my name is Tom Erickson. I'm a technical sales specialist with IBM. Um, been with uh, IBM for about three years now. Prior to that, I was a, a customer working with the solution uh, IBM Cognos primarily for approximately 11 years in, in multiple uh, facets of, of uh, the solution. So being able to you know, be an administrator, uh, a data modeler, a report writer, an analyst, and so forth. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I've also got some cards up here, so if you have questions uh, you know, that you don't think of but uh, want to shoot me an email later, uh, more than welcome to, to do that as well. But really what I'm here to do today is uh, you know, demonstrate uh, Cognos uh, and uh, Pure Data powered by Natiza um, you know, and, and show you the speed um, that can be gained in terms of uh, uh, report running and performance uh, uh, you know, processing um, that you'll see uh, running in an appliance on the back end. You know, working with Cognos for 11 years, you know, uh, you know, I've seen you know where reports need to be scheduled overnight and things like that. And, uh, the the data volumes that uh, those reports um, we're running against isn't uh, what we're running against here today. Uh, keep in mind, this is a simplistic example, but uh, we're running against some extremely large data sets. Uh, Cognos, for, for this particular instance, is installed locally on, on uh, this particular VM that I'm running here. Uh, the pure data appliance that we're going to be running against is actually hosted in the uh, environment up in uh, Columbus, Ohio. So, um, you know, we're going across uh, the network here for some extremely large uh, sets of data and pulling that back in, in sub-second speeds. Um, I was I was blown away by the uh, the performance gains that that I saw in terms of running against a local uh, database and then uh, running against Natiza. So what I want to do is give you an overview of of some of the, the you know the, the reasons that uh, Cognos and Pure Data play so well together, um, and then I'm going to talk to you about how to install uh, the. Um, the Natiza drivers and how to get it all set up, how to get your Cognos environment set up that you, so that you can run um, against, uh, you know, your Natiza environment. So Cognos and Pure Data, you know, like I said, a blazing fast combination. We've got over 100 plus customers that are currently doing it this, and there are really five main reasons uh, to use Cognos with, with Natiza or, or Pure Data for analytics. Um, you get that interactive an analytics capabilities, which allows users to engage in self-service and so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, you get enterprise capability or scalability to support thousands of users to be able to do this. Uh, you get the compelling visualizations, which Cognos provides, right? So be it on the web, by a mobile, um, or an email, right? So the, the Ray visualizations that we talked about in the uh, the, the prior um, uh, uh, presentation. Uh, the queries are optimized, right? So, you know, intelligently balancing your local and your, your remote data for processing. So being able to balance that and optimize that so that you can get those reports back in optimal time, uh, time periods. Uh, and then, like I said, no time, you know, optimal time periods, right? No, no wait times. You're not looking at that hourglass, you know, because uh, instantaneous responses with in-memory um, caching can be uh, uh, achieved, and we do that through the use of dynamic uh, query mode and dynamic cubes, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So Cognos 10 and PD appliance, uh, PDA appliances give you those those super fast results that, uh, you know, a lot of organizations are blown away by the first time they see them. So there are currently, you know, three uh, ways to go about leveraging the uh, the Cognos uh, query capability. Um, you know, there's dynamic query mode, which uh, leverages 64-bit um, uh, um, a 64-bit Java engine. So you know, being able to cache more in memory, write more efficient queries, and so forth. We've got dynamic cubes, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that's our in-memory uh, aggregate aware. Uh, reporting capabilities, and, and that'll really ante up the, the performance in terms of running that against the Natiza environment as well, right? So Natiza on its own, the way that we're running here is against a relational data source, but you can incorporate dynamic cubes into this, uh, this architecture as well and, and really start ratcheting up the performance gains, right? Um, although I don't know how much more you can ratchet them up based on the results that you're going to see here because, um, you know, I was very impressed by, by that. And then compatible query mode, right? You don't need to run in dynamic query mode. We've got a lot of 
legacy customers that are running Cognos 8, and they may, you know, they didn't have dynamic query mode in that particular environment. Well, you can still run compatible query mode against uh, your Netiza environment, right? So, you know, for easy upgrade com uh, uh, you know, compatibility, right, reasons that you might want to use Netiza out of box, and you don't necessarily want to change all of your your packages uh, to, to run dynamic query mode or, or change your configuration to run only dynamic query mode, right? Uh, so in addition to that, you can blend the information, right? Like you can have some information coming from your Arteza environment. You can have some information coming from your other relational data sources. The way that you would blend heterogeneous environments that, that, that you may or may not have in your current environment anyhow, right? So it's just the same, uh, the same uh, paradigm in terms of being able to put those two types of data, data sets together. Um, your, 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 uh, you know, we've got security aware in memory aggregates that, uh, you know, allow us to avoid redundant queries. Um, and then the, the, the SQL that's generated is optimized for each version of Matiza to exploit its analytical functions and, uh, you know, as much as possible. I talked a little bit about dynamic cubes, right? So when we talk about having extremely large data volumes, um, and you want to really perform that ad hoc slice and dice against those extremely large data volumes. Um, you know, using dynamic cubes may be a, a, a path for you as an organization in that particular instance. Uh, we optimize the in-memory caching with in-data processing. So uh, what we do is we load your dimensions into to memory based on, you know, what users are using uh, or what kind of queries users are running. Um, you know, and, and, and the more that they utilize the dynamic cube, the more efficient it becomes because we can see which queries are being run more often than not, and we can load those those uh, those aggregates into into memory, and then they're almost instantaneous when they're coming back rather than going back to the data source every time, um, as well as your in-data processing. So we can do in-memory aggregates as well as in-database aggregates, right? And then I said, you know, it's aggregate aware. So the the... the the capability of understanding what aggregates are being used more uh, uh, more often than not is uh, something that's very powerful in terms of dynamic cubes and being able to get smarter and smarter the more you use it. So with that being said, I, I want to share with you the results that uh, were achieved from this particular test. And like I said, when we ran Cognos, we were running it local on this particular VM. Um, it is Cognos 10.2.2 that we're running, um, and uh, we're running against Netizo, which is not on this particular VM. It is hosted in the uh, in the Columbus, Ohio Service uh, Center, right? So what you're seeing on the right-hand side is a chart of two separate reports that were being run against two different packages, right? And a package is the way that Cognos um, you know, uh, interprets the metadata, right? How, how it's supposed to run queries and, and, and where those queries are going and so forth. The light green one is running against the local data source. It's called Retail Analytics, the package. Um, we're running against retail data in this particular instance. Uh, and the dark blue one is running against the Retail Analytics and the TISA package. And you can see the report times at the top of those bars. So the first two uh, first two bars are uh, report one and two, the base baseline reports running against the local SQL Server database on this VM, right? So we're looking at the the report times being uh, five to to seven seconds, right? Uh, in terms of running that same exact report running against the same exact data volumes um, running against Natiza took. Uh, two and a half and less than a second to run, right? And then you can see the time slowly increase, but we never even, uh, at the very uh, right side of the, the, the chart here, what you're seeing is the, the uh, Cognos environment running against 100 million records. And we're running in, in, in four and a half seconds and a little bit over a second. You know, that's extremely fast. You know, we're not running local, we're going to Columbus, Ohio to, to pull this data out of the Netiza environment and pushing it back. Okay, so really what you're seeing here on the left-hand side now is the average execution time for each one of those reports matching up to the chart. But in addition to that, I've added a, a time per record, right? So how much time does it take to process a record uh, for, for, for PDA, right? And what I want you to take away here is that the more data there is, the faster it becomes in terms of the processing per record, right? So processing large data sets within the PDA appliance is extremely fast. 
your processing time per record decreases as the data sets become larger. Um, you know, in addition to that, when you're doing all this processing, the, um, um, you know, the, the processing is done as, as close to the data as possible. So we're pushing that processing down to the data and then we're just retrieving the results. Okay, so we started off with about 3.2 million records as the baseline, both in SQL Server local running on this VM, and then uh, the baseline on PDA, also 3.2 million records, same exact tables. And what we did is we then exploded that data up to uh, a maximum of 100 million records, right? So we went up um, from, I think it was um, 10 million to 20 million to 50 million to, to then 100 million records. And the dashboard, which I'm gonna show you as far as the presentation is concerned, is gonna be running against that maximum uh, blown out data set of 100 million records. Uh, a quote here from uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of, of Massachusetts, uh, performance is the mantra for us. Embedded larger uh, extensive data uh, enable extended visibility into trends, right? So being able to, as a uh, you know, user of, of Cognos BI on, on PDA, being able to do lightning fast analytics really is what uh, Blue Cross and Blue uh, Shield of Massachusetts ended up uh, seeing. And being able to do those analytics quickly, you know, can, can uh, have a, a life-changing effect for the people that are on the other line or the uh, other end of the phone or, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the individuals that are relying on Blue Cross and Blue Shield to give them the answers that they need quickly and efficiently. So setting up Cognos, how do we do that, right? How do we get it set up so that you can run Cognos against PDA, right? So the first thing is to have the client drivers and you need to have that um, installed. And I'll, sh I'll walk you through how that all is done. Uh, the second component is to create an ODBC or JDBC connection or, um, uh, uh, you know, on, on, your, uh, on your server as well as uh, for Cognos. Um, configure connectivity to Natiza, right? And then create the Cognos data source from there, you're gonna create a framework manager model and package. So this is starting to sound familiar in terms of people that have used Cognos before, right? And then you're off creating reports after you publish that package out to your, to your Cognos environment. So when you install the, the, the PDA drivers, um, you know, there's uh, two sets of drivers you're gonna install. You're gonna install the, the ODBC setup uh, executable. So you're gonna select all defaults. The only thing that's a little bit different there is that when you get to the, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the bit size that you wanna install, you wanna install both 34, uh, 32 and 64 bit drivers. So you, that's the only thing that isn't next, next, next on this install. And then you run the, uh, the, the Tizo JDBC uh, setup.exe and that's an all defaults uh, you know, uh, set up. So you just go next, 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 install it, you're done. Very simple, it takes about five minutes. Um, nothing uh, nothing too, uh, uh, too out of the box there. So the next thing to do then is to create an ODBC connection through your, um, your admin console on your server, right? So you open the ODBC data source admin console, uh, so you select the, the, the DSN tab, um, and then you select add and you select a Natiza SQL from the dropdown, right? And then you would then configure it in terms of the data source, right? Whatever the name of it is, the server that you were hitting in terms of the IP address, um, the database on that particular machine, um, and then username and password as well as port uh, in terms of, you know, how you access that particular box. So I've got a little screenshot there of the way that we set it up here uh, for this particular demonstration. The next thing you want to do is create a JDBC connection, so you can open a command window to do that. Um, you change your directory to wherever the the, uh, the JDBC uh, install um, happened for Natiza. It's usually uh, C colon backslash JDBC, and then you enter this particular command, um, and um, from there you can add the content into the screenshot below. Same thing again: data source, host, port, database name, username, and password. Right. So being able to to quickly and easily configure it. Um, uh, you know, not a box. So once all that is done, um, and, and for those of you that have worked with Cognos, uh, you know, if you want to run in, uh, in a dynamic query mode, um, there is, uh, you know, some extra uh, files that need to be copied from the, uh, 
uh, from the client, uh, be it Oracle, Teradata, and what have you. In this particular case, it's PDA or Netiza. Um, those particular files need to be copied into the Cognos um, uh, install directory, right? So uh, the, uh, the nzjdbc.jar file will need to be copied into your um, v5 data server lab directory and your uh, web inf lab directory right and why both directories well one is is primarily to be able to create the data source connection the jdbc data source connection in cognos and the other one is for being able to to model the data in framework manager so you know framework manager also needs to know so really you know in order for the teaser driver to be picked up by ibm once that is all done uh, once you've copied those that that one file into those two locations, you'll need to restart Cognos, um, and then you can start doing your modeling and data source creation and so forth. So the next thing after you restart Cognos is create a new connection in the Cognos admin portal. Um, you're going to select Natiza as the data source type from the dropdown, and you're going to configure both the JDBC and ODBC tabs. Okay, uh, so when you create uh, the, the connection by default, that, that checkbox, configure JDBC connection, I believe, is on. Um, just leave it on, and you'll be able to configure both. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into the demonstration here. Are there any questions at this particular juncture? Okay. So for those of you that are familiar with Cognos, when you log into Cognos, there's a, you know, obviously a, a folder structure um, that's usually laid out by, by functional, functional area within your business. That's the way I used to do it when I worked with Cognos. Um, in this particular case, I'm going into retail analytics, um, and I'm going to um, you know, open a, um, a workspace. Remember that unified workspace that we talked about in the, uh, the, uh, the presentation that I did prior to this demonstration? Well, this is that 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 uh, location, right? So being able to open this up, and what this is going to do is it's going to run um, against uh, the Natiza environment, and and what we're going to see here is once these come back, you're obviously seeing the record counts from from the tables that are um, available for that uh, for that environment. So um, all of the this came back in in you know under under five seconds, right? So I want to give you an overview of, of workspace, right, and what it is. So along the top-hand side, what you've got here is, you know, um, uh, a file menu um, that allows you to, uh, you know, uh, several different things, being able to launch into different uh, locations within your IBM solution. Um, you're able to, to create new, open, existing ones, save, print. When you're printing this, it prints more of a PDF style rather than a, a web page style. Uh, sharing this out to um, you know your organization, you can select what components of the workspace to share, right? Because the way we look at it is, this is could be completely dynamic in the sense that people can drag and drop drop content onto it, or it can be static in nature, just a traditional dashboard, right? That you don't want to change, right? So being able to share it out and and, and say, all right, you know, there's no there's no way to change anything. You can uh, you know no application bar, no global area, nothing, right? So being able to just share it out that particular way. In addition to that, you can embed this into um, third-party portals via our portals capability so that, you know, if you want to embed this into an intranet site uh, and not have to reauthor it, that capability is there for you as well. We talked about um, being able to uh, collaborate and create activities and so forth. You know, that's uh, what you can do here in terms of uh, collaboration and creating activities. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as, as I walk through this demonstration. Um, for you. I can edit the layout and style, um, and the reason I might want to do that is, is, you know, if I wanted to change the background color or create an image that is the background, I can change the way the tabs appear on my workspace, right? I can have multiple tabs, like a, an Excel spreadsheet, right? You may have uh, specific content on each tab. Uh, you can change the way that that's displayed, be it on, on, on the bottom, the top, or hidden. Uh, you can change the way the widgets are displayed, right? Uh, what the background color on them is and, and so forth, whether or not they have borders. And the reason we do this is to, to, to allow you as a, uh, an individual that's coming in and, and, and using this particular capability to have the maximum flexibility to create a cohesive look and feel, right? Because not every report developer or author is going to develop a report the exact same way. 
right? Uh, you know, you might try to push out templates and so forth, and you know, most of the time people would adhere to that. Um, but there can be instances where where uh, components aren't developed exactly the same, right? And for that instance, if if I change the way that I want to size this, the you know the the widgets react in in a way that um, you know resizes them to fit based on what it is that you're putting together. Along the left hand side, I've got a, a global pane here, and this is you can hide and show this, right? I've just by default shown it. Uh, and what I can do here is put uh, uh, filter capabilities around uh, driving action onto my dashboard, right? Uh, and if I've got multiple tabs, I can drive that action from this global area to every single tab that I've got on my workspace. And it's nice because what I can do there is save real estate. I don't need to repeat filters on every single uh, uh, tab on my, my workspace, right? The other way that I've seen this used is, is a global KPI area that maybe you want to display for all of your users, but you don't want to take up the real estate on every single tab of the workspace. You can place this here, and then users can hide and show it based on, on their individual needs. The right-hand side gives me a display of my, my public folder area in terms of what I've got um, in my, my folder structure, right? And then I can drag and drop content uh, from my uh, from my my uh, my folder structure here. So any report object that I have, if I want to uh, take parts of it, what we call widgets, which is what these components on this workspace are, I can drag individual components on and off to uh, on and off the workspace. So just a click it and drag it over kind of movement, right? So being able to put that on there. This is searchable. So if you don't know where something exists as a business user. You can search for it. Not only will it search for the name of the report that you're searching for, it'll also search for the content within uh, the report itself. So the metadata tag, say you're searching for revenue, it'll come up with, with a list of things that have revenue in the title as well as a list of things that have revenue within the report itself. Okay, there's a toolbox here. So think of this as like a My Yahoo page, which you can build out to meet your needs. So you can add action buttons, filters, and images, so forth. But if you drag a, for example, a um, um, a filter onto the canvas, what it'll do is it'll actually pull all the widgets on this particular canvas and say these are the things that you can actually filter by. Um, so you know, and as I as I hover over this, you can see how they flash in the background. So for example, if I select region, all of the widgets, I've got four widgets on this particular um, workspace here, would adhere to that particular um, that particular filter, right? Uh, same thing with uh, with type, which would be the, uh, the the store types, right? In town mall and so forth. All four of them would adhere to that particular component. I can change this from a radio button to a checkbox. So if I want to combine two different uh, data objects into one singular filter. And this is nice for individuals that don't have perfect databases. And I know that everybody here probably has one of those, but not everybody has one uh, like that. So if you've got uh, components that um, have the same type of data in it, so I'm going to just use time as an example. Um, and one of them says Y uh, RS for years, and the other one says years. But they have the same data types in them. They're all the same years, right? Uh, being able to combine those from two different data sources just by combining uh, this via the, the, the checkbox here, okay? Um, so what, I, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to play a role of, a, of, a, um, of an executive here, and I'm going to come in and, and look at my, my workspace, and it's giving me an overall view of my units uh, and margin by state in terms of what we sold and what margins we're making. Um, I've been looking at my, my margin uh, by region and, and the store types, right? So um, taking a look at these, I can hover over them, and it, it shows me the store type, the particular region that we're looking at. Uh, on the bottom here, I'm seeing it by store, right? How many so units are we selling by store? Um, and then the units uh, by, by cluster in terms of the, 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 the store types. Um, and never mind this. Uh, you know, increasing, decreasing here field because what we've done is we've repeated the data, so that may look a little strange to you. Um, I can add comments to these particular widgets. So if I want to add a comment here, right, I can add comments around uh, the one that exists. I can delete the comment, um, you know, or I can edit it in terms of what it was uh, 
uh, put in, but I put a comment in here as an executive is research the, the Midwest margins, please, right? Um, I'm also going to create a uh, an activity here um, around this to review the, uh, the Midwest margins, uh, uh, Midwest region margins, right? And once I do that as an executive, instead of sending an email out to my um, to my management team saying, hey, can you put together a work group to, to, to research these particular margins? Um, and then having that, you know, go into the uh, the black hole that is the email um, process, right? I've got a, a trackable activity now within my workspace. I can come back as an executive and see what the status is. If there's anything new, I'll actually get alerts when things are changed or assigned back to me to review and so forth. And it's all within this unified workspace that I'm working in. So I've created this activity. Um, and now I'm going to switch hats and I'm going to play the, the role of an analyst that's come in. I've, I've just sat down at my desk, I've grabbed my cup of coffee, I've taken a sip, uh, opened my email, and uh, I got an email saying, hey, there's been an activity created you, for you within Cognos, and you need to come and take a look at these, these margins or review them uh, for the Midwest region. So as an analyst, I come in and I look at this exact same workspace that my executive, excuse me, my executive looked at. And uh, what I can do is, is start playing around with it a little bit, right? So what I might want to do is, um, you know, turn on a master filter here to to drive content. So if I want to take a look at maybe the southeast region uh, and figure out what's going on there, I can drill into that. Um, I can take a look at uh, the um, uh, southeast. You know, any one of these regions that I want to take a look at, I can drill in and out. So this is that master filter capability that we we talked about uh, earlier that gives me that capability to be able to to drill in and out of, of the information that uh, we're looking at, right? Uh, so quickly and easily being able to to drill into uh, that particular uh, instance of uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, looking for that Midwest uh, information, right? In addition to that, I can turn that off um, and uh, utilize the, the filtering capabilities on the uh, on the right-hand side here if I want to look for specifically the Midwest region, right, and drill into that to try and give me understanding of what's going on there, right? So being able to, to view um, the, the information for each one of the states so I can see here um, the size of the the bubble is the um, um, the, the the margin and the, um, uh, the 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 color of it is the, the number of units that were sold right uh, for that particular uh, region right so get an understanding of of that and I can see here along the bottom um, you know the the stores that that perform the poorest right in terms of um, uh, the the number of units they sold which is uh, primarily zero versus the stores that are really performing well in terms of the um, the number of units they're selling and then the margin um, that they're selling. So, you know, further out we go, the more units they're selling, maybe the margin isn't that quite as great, but uh, they're selling more of it. So those might be some things that we want to model in that particular region around uh, what's occurring there. And I can take a look at the store types, right, by this, uh, this radio uh, uh, button here. So if I want to take a look at in-town, um, uh, maybe I want to take a look at mall, you know, and this is a multi-select capability. So I'm adding content in um, or removing by each button that I select. Taking a look at just mall now, maybe I want to take a look at just retail park, right? So being able to, to drill into that capability uh, and quickly pull that type of information back um, is something that we can do here, right? And, and just keep in mind that this record count that I'm pulling back here, you know, this sales history record count, that, that's the fact table that we're working against, um, is 100 million records, right? So we're getting an understanding of of the sheer volume of data that we're pulling back from Columbus on this PDA box, and we're getting sub-second performance in terms of doing ad hoc analytics around that, right? So um, I'm not necessarily seeing exactly what it is that I want to see here, so what I might want to do is do some more ad hoc analysis in terms of going into uh, workspace advance and, and, and creating a cross tab um, of, of one of these particular charts to, to show me the actual raw data for this. So what I'm going to do is just select 
the do more capability here, and that's going to open up into to Workspace Advanced. And now I'm really starting to slice and dice uh, the information, right? So before what I was doing is I was looking at report parts. Well, now what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at um, uh, individual database field and table level objects to allow me to uh, to to play around with uh, with the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete this uh, particular chart here, and I'm going to take a look at um, a cross tab, right? So looking at this particular interface, we can see that you know folks that have used Excel or other productivity software, we can uh, and we should be able to pick this up quickly because we've got the same type of file menu across the top, the same kind of buttons and so forth. I've got a source tab here that allows me to look at my one version of my organizational truth, right? Um, that 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 singular point of uh, instance that everybody trusts in terms of where the data came from. You know, if I want to get an understanding of where something comes from, I can use the lineage capability uh, to pull that up and, and, and get an understanding of, of where that information is coming from. Right, so we can we can trace it back all the way to the data source. We can look at the field name that was in the uh, in the database table, and then um, the way it's presented via the uh, the metadata labor layer. Right, so uh, if that changes, you can trace it back. So at your fingertips, when somebody asks you, where is that information coming from? At any particular juncture, I can figure out where that's coming from. So it eliminates that uh, distrust of where did you get your data, right? Everybody's got transparency into where that information came from. I've got toolbox capability here, and now instead of working with report parts, I'm working with individual field and table level objects, like I said, so I can create charts, visualizations, lists, um, you know, create a, a nice looking report if I wanted to, right? But for this particular instance, I'm looking at the Midwest region, um, and I wanted to get a, an understanding of what's going on there. So what I want to do is actually drag a cross tab onto my canvas here um, and start adding content in. So what I want to do is take a look at uh, uh, my region and drag that on. And keep in mind, you know, I'm going against this large data set that we talked about earlier, right? So I'm looking at region. Um, I'm going to take a look at the um, the state that those particular regions are are looking at. And that's going to come in. And then what I'm going to do is actually bring in the, um, the measures in terms of my unit, uh, my price, and my margin. And add that in. And that's that large fact table that we talked about, right? 100 million records. Boom. You're there, right? And very quickly, I, you know, blown away by the, the speed. And, you know, from there, I can go into the properties of this. Uh, and, and start changing around the way that the data is formatted, right? So units, unit margin, and price, I can make that a, a number, um, you know, with uh, zero decimal places. Uh, and, you know, you can see that the way that uh, is formatted, right? So everything on this workspace has got a, a, um, a property and it can be individually worked with so that you can get something. But, you know, once again, I wanted to take a look at um, the, uh, particular uh, see, location. I want to take a look at uh, just the Midwest, right? So I want to filter that down to Midwest, just include that. Um, and I've just got the Midwest now, and I can see the units and the margin and so forth. And I can add that back into my, my workspace here and then communicate that information back up to um, my um, my executive or my management team via the activity in the workspace here to give me an understanding of you know what was done in terms of looking at the information and, and uh, you know giving an update in terms of you know here are the the units that we sold in this particular region um, you know at, at this particular price and here are some of the stores that that are successful at doing that and maybe we should take a look at retail parks instead of uh, in town and malls in this particular region to, to drive uh, more profitable business. But keeping again once in mind that I can do this kind of speed of thought analytics through the capabilities of, uh, of pure data for analytics running against extremely large volumes of data and just you know answering questions as they're being asked rather than having to wait uh, on information as it comes about. So that, that brings me to the end of the demonstration. Um, does anybody have any questions around that? Thank you for your time.